Coppinger's going to take it right foot to Coppinger. Oh! Doncaster Rovers have done it. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Aaron John here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers Fan channel. That is the headline tonight. Omar Bogle gone. Omar Bogle is gone. He's gone to Hartlepool United on a two and a half year deal, permanent transfer. Um, it looks like this is on a free. Um, so it was reaching the end of his contract in the summer. So basically, hang on. So I'm trying to, it was reaching the end of his contract in the summer. So basically what the club has done is they've made a mutual termination. Um, so this is a mutual termination of the, of the contracts. And Rovers came out tonight and said that they've agreed a mutual termination of Omar Bogle's contract. Um, so from the sounds of it is he had six months left from the sounds of it. It looks like they agreed to part ways. I'm guessing they might've paid him off with some of the significant funds or use some of the significant funds to pay him off mutually part ways. And then he's gone to move to Hartlepool for free on a two and a half year deal. I think that's just what has happened here. I think that's what the situation, what, where we are in terms of the situation, Basically, he had six months left on his contract. Um, we've got we use these significant funds or some of these significant funds to pay Bogle off to part ways now rather than six months in the summer. Bogle's free, goes to Hartlepool for, for barely any money apart from wages and a two and a half year deal. So, could be wrong, but um, but that seems to be what the situation is. Um, so we're not going to get any money from this Bogle deal. Um, I'm guessing we'll have put some of the money from the funds into paying Bogle off, uh, which is what fans were asking him, the club, to, to do um, back in the summer when we did a shambles of deadline down to Richie Wellens. We didn't bring anyone of interest in. We didn't bring anyone of quality in. And we basically... And pe people were saying on social media... Pay Bogle off. Pay him the money. I think that now the club's got the money to pay him off. I think they've paid him off. So that's what, what I think the situation is at the moment. Um, of course, many of you joining tonight. Um, some of you commented even, be even before uh, the live stream. Um, with Bogle going, he was one of our most paid players, so hopefully can afford someone better. Absolutely. I think that's another reason why we've done this. I think that we've put the funds into other players. Someone uh, messaged me and th thinks, well, in their opinion, thinks that the Adam Clayton uh, deal and the Meepo Odebeko deal, which I've got a video lined up, ready for that one uh, this evening. I'm going to film another video on ML Bogle tonight. Um, in fact, while I'm here live, while I remember, I'm going to um, <laughs> turn my light a bit here. I'm going to um, put my camcorder onto charge while I'm live because um, then when I've finished my live, hang on. <laughs> uh, let me just get my. Uh, ah, um, let me get my uh, charger out. So I can put my camcorder on to charge while I'm live and then um, get right on to filming the Bogle video um, once I've finished. Um, but let's go through some comments before we talk more about more deals. Um, check out Charlton Fan 2005 of the content. Thank you very much. I'm so sad. Oh, my Bogle, baby. Oh, my Bogle, whoa. Can't believe we're going to sing that. Well, we might still sing that on Saturday. Uh, let me join. I will put the stream link in the chat in a little bit once I've got through the basic headlines. I'm going to talk more about it in detail while we wait for callers. So I'm just going to go through a couple of headlines and then we're going to put the stream link in as soon as possible. 2K off the wage bill, not too bad. Needs reinvesting though. Exactly. Um, 
that is exactly what we need to be doing. Uh, are we still linked to Louis Barry? Can you confirm it? 72 wheel the football league.com has been reporting that we are interested in Louis Barry. Um, that is where we're going to be going off at this stage. Um, I don't know any official links from people in the know. I don't know, I don't know any information about people about from people that are in the know about Louis Barry. Um, all I know is what the 72 wheel of the football league and multiple of people have said that we we are interested. Uh, and we're going up against Swindon. Whether Burton's in just or not is another story, but um, there we go. I will be letting people join. Um, no Bogle, no party. God, it's going to be weird to see no more Bogle, not Rovers. So many, so many months after, um, you know, things like that. Um, and, and, you know, people people saying why people shot at Bogle leaving, it's a couple of good games, that's it. I, you know, see, I've just seen that on Twitter. For me, I don't think it's the fact that we're shot he's leaving. I think or oh, he's left. I think it's I think it's the fact of the timing of the of the leaving. Um I, I've I've got a feeling it's the timing of the of the departure that shocked many people. Um it's definitely the reason why I'm shocked and the reason why I got shocked by it was because of the timing of the departure. Uh, especially so close to a match day as well. But uh, apparently he is eligible in Hartlepool's squad for their next game on Saturday. So uh, good luck to him in Hartlepool. Um, what's for dinner? Already had it, had a KFC. Um, Lou Barry, not too likely. We Now we've got the West Ham fella now, surely. Yeah, well, you know, on, on paper, yes. You, you, you'd say that we've got our striker in now. So, um, you know, you'd probably say that Louis Barry's probably going to go to Swindon at this point. But uh, I could be wrong. Um, I'll tell you what though, if we got Louis Barry as well, that would be pretty good business, but I would, I'd still like to see a winger come in. I still think, I still think there's one more coming. I still think there's one more coming. Um, so we're going to put the StreamYard link in the chat now while I go through the rest of the headlines, uh, news that we already know about, news that we've already spoken about. Uh, so we have brought in two deals this week uh, on a bit more positive news. Um, Adam Clayton and Mippo Odebeke, uh, they have joined the football club. Uh, Adam Clayton joins on an 18-month deal and uh, Mippo Odebeke joins on loan till the end of the season. Of course, spent the first part of the season on loan at Huddersfield in the Skybet Championship. Uh, what are the chances of you staying up? Um, we need 10 wins from the last 19 games. If we continue where we left off at MK Dons and we get win after win after win now. If if we beat Plymouth on Saturday, first of all, if we beat Plymouth on Saturday and, and at least turn up, if not get a point against Rotherham on Tuesday, I, I've got a load more confidence that we'll stay up. If we beat Plymouth on Saturday, I think we've got more confidence staying up. But it's just a case of other people faltering around us now. It can't just be down to ourselves. We've got to ha have the look of other teams faltering around us. Morecambe's got to drop more points. Fleetwood's got to drop points. Wimbledon's got to drop more points. Um, Gillingham's still got to falter. Crew's still got to falter. There's still a lot of clubs that need to falter. So it can't just be all down to us. Um, Gary said they wanted to sign five loan players. We've signed four, so one more incoming, if I'm correct. You are correct. Um, yeah. Plymouth is certainly beatable. We did it in the 93rd on Saturday. Big John Mark, we're scoring. Hope you guys stay up so we can keep a local game next season. I hope so as well. I really do. Um, we've definitely put ourselves in a decent position to stay up. Just need things to go our way now. I reckon, Chell, absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot on. Um, so, um, on... First of all, let's speak about the first of the two signings then this week, Adam Clayton. Um, for me, I I feel like Adam Clayton could be decent. I think that I think that Adam Clayton could be a decent signing, I, and I'm not saying that just because you know um, I'm you know deluded or anything like that. I, I, for me, I just personally feel like they are. Um, I feel like he's. I feel like he's got something to offer. I feel like he's got something to offer, and the reason why I think he's got something to offer is um, 
pure and simple, really. I, I think it's just a case of, um, you know, experience. I think that's the main thing he offers in this team. It's experience. And it's experience in the middle of the park. And it's experience that's going to get us, you know, keep us up. It's experience that's going to keep us up 100%. Um, you know, it, it's, it's literally as simple as that. Um, it's, it's as simple as having the experience to keep us up. Uh, Max, big up. Bogle left. He has indeed. Two new signings, though. Yeah, that's, you know, every every cloud has its silver lining. Bogle's left, but we've got two signings in. So, you know, and, and, and you know, people can't help but think that the Bogle funds provided Adam Clayton and Meepo Odebeke and uh, Odebeko. And, um, you know, people say, oh, we never had substantial funds. We never had significant funds. All the funds from Bogle went to these signings this week, all this and that. <laughs> you know, believe the board. I think they have provided a bit more funding than the previous window. Uh, Matt is here. Uh, Matt, uh, who do you support? Uh, Rovers. Nice. Um, so, first of all, then, Omar Bogle's gone to Hartlepool. I think no one can be shocked by the departure because I think it was going to happen probably in the summer anyway. But I think people can be shocked by the timing of the departure, especially so close to a match day when we thought we weren't expecting any departures. Yeah, I would just... It was just a shock to me. I saw it get, got sent to me and I was just... Obviously, I could understand it because he's out of contract in the summer, but it's just, you know... I didn't think it'd be Hartlepool of all teams as well, but I don't know if he's League 2 quality. I know he's obviously the GOAT, but yeah. And, you know, the way that we've done it, I mean, I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but it's, it, from the, from what Rovers tweeted and how they've tweeted it and from how they've posted about the transfer, from what it looks like is what we probably, under if we were thinking about Wellens' plans, probably should have done after deadline day which is or we could maybe couldn't do because of the money situation. What's happened from the looks of it is we've um, paid him off with the, with some of the money that from the, from the funding for January. We've paid him off. They've agreed a mutual termination and a consent. He's gone to Hartlepool for no money on a two-and-a-half-year deal. I think that's sounding like what's happened. Yeah, it is because obviously one at most uh, I's paid money and obviously, you know, we're bringing in Odebeku and players like that. You've just got to fund up. You've just got to, like, give opportunity for other players to come in and obviously try and keep us up. Yeah, absolutely. And well, I'm trying to find the um, uh, original article from when um, Omar Bogle signed for us or the or original... Um, club statement for when Rovers signed him. Um, when Omar Bogle originally signed, it was an 18-month deal. Um, and, you know, I, th I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Charlton, um, well, from what I understand, I think Charlton did the same kind of thing that we've, that we did. Yeah, um, they like, released him, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, so I think what's happened here is we've agreed a mutual termination. In that case, we've we've released well, not really released him. I think we've parted ways, and but again, it's another deal where we don't really get any money from it. So have we kind of missed the boat here a bit? Yeah, I reckon we've just you know we've just rushed into things in in the sort of way like we've just wanted to think ahead of the last few days of the window. But hopefully, a few more players come in. But then obviously, you've got to think about terminating these contracts and then all that and obviously it's still still a lot of money to terminate for Rovers you know we are budget yeah and you've got to think Bogle's probably one of the highest earners at the club as well he's probably on a couple of grand a week yeah good good few I'd say three three or four grand a week yeah yeah and yeah switching to a more positive note then two signings this week um Obviously, back on Tuesday, we signed Alan Clayton, a really good, experienced midfielder, if we can keep him fair. And um, obviously, today, we announced the signing of Mippo Odebeko, the highly talented West, West Ham striker on loan to the end of the season. Um, whether that ends our interest or reported interest in Louis Barry or not is uncertain. Whether Swindon's won the race, I'm not too sure yet. Um, obviously, those questions will be answered before or on the 31st of January. But... Um, 
First of all, on Adam Clayton, I mean, he's, um, I think we've got, I think people don't understand, people that have written him up for a Baldwin Gate. If we can keep him fit for a 33-year-old, I think we've got someone here who should be playing in the championship. Yeah, end of days experienced. He's, he's a class midfielder. He was for Leeds and teams like that. And obviously, you know, we're, it, it were a massive signing for us, in my opinion. I was shocked when I saw it. Obviously, he's had no club, but I think that's part of the reason because he's had no club. So, obviously, he's getting him back on his feet again. But on the Beck, who I'm a bit worried about because he made quite a few appearances for Huddersfield before um, last year and he, he didn't really do too much. You know, he didn't have enough good stats, but hopefully he can prove his senior, here like, like, um, so he can take over from Huwula and players like that who have not been informed. Well, I mean, the Huddersfield manager, Carlos Cobron, came out and said um, that this lad's got significant potential. In fact, I've actually got the um, official statement from Carlos Cobran from when uh, when we we brought him in um, and, and what Cobran has, has, has said. Um, so this was the article from the Free Press. Um, so Carlos Cobran officially said, I hope all the best to him because for me, he's a very good lad. Um, he went on to say he was working hard enough for me, but still young and needs more minutes. The reason for the loan was to help continue to, to develop because West Ham understand that their 23s was not enough for him to develop. And I agree, but sometimes the first step of a loan is the more complicated step. I think he was the growing with the passing of the months with us. I was watching a more mature player and more able to compete in the second part of the loan than in the first part of the loan. But it's true that we couldn't guarantee him the minutes for me that he needs. For me, he was spending the first part of his loan move focusing on adapting his skills for senior football, and for me, he's completed that process. The second part of the loan has been linked to showing these skills he's learned in a real game situation, and it's something we cannot guarantee him right now. So for us, it was very important for the player to help him continue the development to find a project where he can show these improvements. But I'm fully convinced he's a player with a lot of talent that has something special in his finishing, and he's a player we wish all the best. So from the sounds of Carlos Cobaron, it sounds like Huddersfield's done the hard work. Now we're watching the talent. Yeah, it's you know it. It does sound like he's a good player, and obviously, if he's good enough, if he's come through the likes of West Ham, but you know, obviously, this might be doing the world a good. You know, obviously, maybe the Championship. Obviously, he still had to adapt, but going down to another league is all right at his age. You know, he's still quite young, and obviously, he's got time to develop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was going to go through a few comments. Uh, Ethan Galbraith's been our best player. Big Bo, give give Bogues a send off, chal, please. Um, of course I will. Of course I will. I'll start the chant off. I have to. Uh, can we hear you all the youngest song, mate? On Saturday. On Saturday. Um, so Bogle has gone as under McSheffrey. He's been playing well most of the time, but at least we have a good replacement from West Ham. Can't remember his name. Uh, Mippo Odebeko. Hope he's not another chikur. I hope that that's the that's the hope with Mippo, I think, uh, as well, Matt. I think we hope he's not a Tiago Chikur where he's come with a lot of potential and a lot of expectation, but fails to deliver in senior football. Um so yeah, so so fingers crossed um that happens. But um but Matt, um, thank you very much for coming on the show. Much appreciated and have a no wonderful worries. Week. Take care. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, great to see him on the show. Um, obviously, guys, you guys can call in if you want to. Please use uh, the StreamYard link. I've put it um, in the chat again so you guys can come on. Um Big up, Aaron. We finally won. We did. We did win on Saturday, and hopefully it'll be another win this weekend. He's our centre-half. He's our number three. Watch and defend. What a bargain for free. He can pass the ball. Calm as you like. He's all the younger. He's all the younger. <laughs> nice one. I like it. Fantastic prayers on Saturday's performance, though. Fingers crossed for this Saturday. That's the hope. In fact, no, that's not even the hope. That's the expectation. We've got to get back to back wins now. Use this win and don't sit comfortably. Don't think that we're out of the woods just yet. Um... So, you know, let's let let's, you know, use that and take it because you know, we have a huge opportunity here to um to really, you know, 
use this and don't sit comfortably. Use that momentum and keep it going, especially against a Plymouth side that look incredibly shaky. Also, by the way, stay tuned tomorrow evening between 6 and 8 p.m. because I've got a very special live preview for the Plymouth game. Um, I'm going to do my own preview as well, but I'm also going to do a live preview, speak about team news going into this, the officials, things like that. I'm also going to have Niall with me from, of course, the EFL show, which hasn't been on for the past few weeks. But, um, but yeah, me and Niall are reunited. Um, so, um, so, so me and Niall are reunited uh, here on my channel tomorrow evening. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to be previewing the Plymouth match. Uh, this should be a very interesting conversation because uh, Plymouth haven't been doing so great, and uh, we finally got our first win and could, um, you know. Could go for the moment and sing it, please. Think it's a banger. Uh, was you on Praise the Grumble listening to it on the way back? I was. I was. Uh, it's the Van Dyke song. Are you meeting by face? I hope so. Fingers crossed I can grab a drink with him at some point. Um, I need to find my Ollie Younger song, uh, the lyrics, because I still haven't remembered the lyrics yet. I'm trying to get the lyrics remembered so that I can... Um, So I can, um, what you call it, um, get, um, I want to try and remember the lyrics before Saturday, try and get them nailed on in my head. Um, I've got, I've got the lyrics on Twitter. There we go. Oh, all the younger, a defender from Sunderland. Attackers come to not, but then he knocks them off the block. He takes them all out and he leaves them all in shock. Oh, all the younger. Love it. Um, I'm meeting him 100%. Absolutely. You know, why not? Um, is it better than my song, Chow? Um, I think they're both equally as good. I th you know, we all have to be equally good here. Argyle drew 3 3 with Fleetwood. Lol, unlucky. Yeah. Um, you know, Fleetwood getting precious point there. Um, Fleet, Plymouth dropping points. Can't be possible. Good song. Um, hope we can stay up. However, it's quite a mammoth task. And I hope that it's not just like earlier this season when we sign a lot of players with potential and don't perform. Love it, Charles. That's class, mate. Lewis, we will wait at the away end. Yeah, you just subbed to me. Um, uh, Lewis, just subbed to you. I'll just start my channel myself. Brilliant. Congratulations. Go and subscribe and support. Let's talk Nottingham Forest. I'm sure they're going to have a brilliant season lined up uh, with their manager. Um, Fairs, think yours is better, to be fair. Thank you very much. Um, go ballers, you'll be there. <laughs> I might, to be fair, I might actually go ballers early in the morning just to um, see if they're on there. But... Um, but no, I'll probably go stadium first. But uh, there we go. Um, but, guys, please come on. Please share your thoughts. I'll put the stream on link in the chat again. Uh, I really want to get some more people on here. Um, can't wait for Bogle Hatchick against us next season. That's if we're in League 2 next season. There is, you know, the, the funny thing is, last weekend sort of gave me hope that there's still a chance. Last weekend gave me a bit of hope that there's still a chance. Because... Um, all the younger at the back was world class. Um, Alowu and younger as a partnership is brilliant. Um, Jones in net gives us gives us a, gives me a bit more confidence uh, with that defensive pairing in front of him rather than another defensive pairing. Um, I think that having Agar on the pitch or someone of that nature, maybe someone like Meepo, could actually complement to do more. I think it could complement him even more. Um, and I feel like, you know, players are starting to get better. Some players are going to start to get better. Um, he'll win us the league. He'll win us the league. Stevie Cooper, he'll win us the league. Um, have you heard of the City Grand Song post on Fan Ho? Our fans are insane at home, especially. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it before. I'll have a look. I was there last Saturday. Fans were unreal, to be honest. Good evening. Good evening. Could you imagine if Donny Rovers signed a Spanish manager like Unai Emery at Arsenal or something like that? Could you imagine? Hey, how are you? 
Where have you lot signed? Well, we've signed Mipo Odebeko from West Ham on loan to the end of the season, but Omar Bogle's gone to Hartlepool and we didn't know about him until now. Uh, Sam is here. Sam's a bit of a regular on these streams. Sam, um, first of all, then, before we talk about the positive new signings, um, I mean, some people will see this as a positive as well, but um, Omar Bogle departs. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like we've paid him off with some of the money we've now got. Um, and he's gone for no money for a two and a half year deal to Hartlepool. I mean, your thoughts on, on that? We've basically let him go for nothing. Yeah, I, when I saw it, I honestly thought that it were a fake account, something like that, because I'm like, nah, can't be. There were no speculation or anything of him leaving. Obviously, I thought he was going to leave when Wellings were in charge. But since yeah. McSheffrey took over, I, I just thought, nah, he won't leave, because obviously he'd been training with him. But I think it's a good move for him, you know, he... I think he was struggling to find his way again. Uh, well, way in the first part and the second part, you know, uh, after he, what it sounded from when we signed him, like he had a rough couple or however long you're at Charlton for a couple of months, I think. Um, but he couldn't get back to it. And I think League Two probably is level right now until he gets back. Uh, but yeah, pretty. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to buy him, but, you know, hopefully it offloads some funds. So we can get uh, some more players in. Yeah, and you know, the the thing that sort of makes me uneasy about this is the fact that yes, it frees up money on the wages, but because because he was probably earning about two or three grand a week. But for me, it's like what we what we did, what we probably under Wellings were good, what fans were crying out for him to do under Wellings you know, back at the end of the summer window, which is, they they tell, they, they basically said to the board, pay him off, we don't want to be here. If we don't want to be here, pay him off. And, um, you know, it was a case of pay him off and let's use the funds for something else. But then, now that there's no, you know, well in, so McSheffrey's in charge, and we've got these significant funds. I think what's happened is we've used some of those significant funds to pay off Omar Bogle. Yeah, I know a lot of people might not like me saying this, but I think this does show that we have got, well, I'm not going to say significant or substantial or whatever um, Baldwin said, but you know, I think it shows that we've got a bigger budget than back in, um, well, bigger budget left than what we had left back in, well, when he wanted them out towards the yeah. end of the summer transfer window and because obviously we can pay him off which well he didn't really want to do is he needed more players in does that show that the squad's more built we got a bit more money you know you could argue both ways but you know I think it just shows that we have got a bit more money and I know a lot of people aren't saying that but you know it's, I think it's just the truth yeah I think we've got a lot more money than than what's being let off I've I, I just got the sneaky suspicion that we've got a lot more money than what's being said um, not, not a lot more money I think the budget this sit for this January window is probably going to be about 400, 500 grand. You know, it wasn't going to be anything substantial or anything like that. It wasn't going to go into the millions, but I definitely think when you see, when, when you see reports that Marquis is going to eat up the whole budget, you know, you know, you've got a budget at least half a million quid. So, you know, for me, I think that was the, I was setting 400, 500 uh, quid as a, as a, as a sort of ballpark figure. Um, we know that Ollie Younger cost about hundred thousand, because uh, hundred to two hundred thousand, because you know he was an undisclosed fee. Yes, it wasn't being released by Sunderland. Sunderland weren't paying him off or anything like that. So we knew he cost money, and it's not like the board, you know. And that was an example of the board are willing to spend money. Um, so what happens to the rest of this transfer window? Now we brought in Clayton, we brought in Meepo. Bogle's gone, and it's qu it's quite. Interesting how Bogle announced it on Hartlepool's first interview on their on their social media. How um, this transfer happened over a four day period. Yet four days ago, he said he was totally committed to being here. So you got to question Bogle's commitment first of all. Yeah, I think. Well, obviously not. Well, I, I haven't seen anything anywhere saying that he's going. So he must have kept a really good secret. Um, well, no. But, to be fair, he said on he said in his first interview at Hartlepool that. This happened over about four four days, and four days ago he did say to the media after a match um, that he, or, or before I think it was the article that the Free Press put out about his exile mm -hmm. and things like that. 
few days ago. Um, but he said that he was totally committed to being here. He was focused. He was wanting to work harder. And then four days later, you know, comes out with this, that in the last four days he was talking about going, uh, he was trying to get the deal wrapped up. And, you know, it sort of puts mm-hmm. into perspective who tells the truth here. Yeah, I think he was probably just trying to, you know, leave on good terms, could we say? Maybe just like not say, oh, well, he were never, we're never really going to come out and say, oh, I'm not really liking it. Worry. He probably just tried to, cover his own back if that's right saying I don't know um, yeah. just like say yeah I want to stay and then if, I, I'm not sure what happened it could have just come along just after they could have you put a bid in after that but um, yeah I think if you don't if you don't if you don't want to be here let's be honest I don't really want him as a player you know if uh, we need the situation that we're in we need people that try and are going to put their uh, body on the line and everything on the line like the players that we have brought in yeah, I think that's the the way forward, to be perfectly honest. Um, talking about the rest of the window then, because obviously this happened after Adam Clayton was signed. So Adam Clayton could not have been brought in by the funds from Bogle because the deal was never completed by then. And any funds freed up by Bogle's wages. So for me, Adam Clayton was signed through the board significant funds. Meepo... I think that deal was probably done anyway. Um, I don't know about you, but I think Adam and Meepo were both from Board's funds rather than Bogle freed up. So now that Bogle's freed up as well, could we see more than one coming? So I originally said in that me- at the end of the Meepo video, which will come up this evening, I think there's one more coming. Do we think there's more than one coming? Yeah, I think that um, we're still going to have two to come. And like you said, uh, but before it... You- they then was well. They probably was from the substantial funds, uh, substantial funds. You know <laughs> what they all love. Um, but no, I think now we've obviously, well, obviously, hopefully not use a lot of the budget or well, we're not paying, obviously not paying his wage now, so it will fill up money. Um, hopefully, we can get in two more. I think I'm hoping we get two more, but I'm probably leaning towards we're probably going to get one more. I think possibly. I hope to, but I think. My thinking of we're going to get two is more hope. That was a lot of hopes and thinking in that sentence. But yeah, I think we just need. I'm not. I'm not sure we need to strengthen. I think we need a well we need to strengthen the defense. Maybe like yeah. a left back. If if Tom, if Tommy Rose is going to play more attacking, if he's not, then I'm not sure. <laughs> I I. I... I think I said it in the Meepo video. I, when I said there's one more coming, I think it's going to be a loanee winger. Um, I think it'll be a winger on loan to the end of the season. I think that's what Gary McSheffrey was looking at as well. I was sort of go- I was sort of going off what Gary McSheffrey was saying um, to the press. So I think that a winger on loan will come in. If there's going to be an extra one as well, I said I want it to be a left back or a left wing back with some experience that can tutor Horton, but also compete with him for a first team place and keep him on his toes. Because for me, with with John injured and Roe playing further forward, for me Horton's just got no competition. And he might feel com- start to feel comfortable. We need someone that's going to not make him feel comfortable and make him work week in week out to keep his place, but also teach him at the same time. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You know, Horton's a good up on up-and-coming player and I think he just needs pushing I think that's got quite a lot with our youngsters you know I think even with Lewis Jones I think that's why we brought that keeper and just to push him you know um, obviously we're not going to be signing a big get, getting from a there's no point in signing a loan because you want a loan to develop players so I think we've yeah. gone for this just to push Jones and uh, I think that's what I think that's what our youngsters need just to show your place isn't cemented even though I was your boss when I was younger. Well, when you were younger, you know, your place isn't cemented. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Just going through some comments, and I see a few people saying that interview was from a few weeks back and it was only released recently. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'm not saying Bogle wasn't committed. Uh, You know, it doesn't mean he wasn't committed. I'm not saying he wasn't committed, but... At the time, I, when I thought the interview was recently and published recently, not just, you know, weeks weeks and months ago, but recently released, you know, I, it sort of made me question it. But fair enough, you know, fair enough. We all get things wrong. Uh, Clay won't be on a lot anyway, hasn't played since last season. Even though, to be fair, he was at Birmingham. Even, even for a championship player, I still think his wages would still be a little bit, like at least a couple of grand a week. Um, 
Heard two signings. Very interesting. Uh, Charlton Close competing the signing of Marcus Brown, who completed the loan signing of Nile John. Seen that hours ago. Um, McSheffrey's debating getting in more defensive players. I think that I saw a left back that was mentioned he's hoping for would give Horton some competition, which is always a good thing. I swear I've never seen that. So if that's true, and we've seen, and there's an article out there about that or somewhere about that recently. I swear, I might as well go into the mind-reading industry. Um, Horton is terrible, just my opinion. Well, that's your opinion. Horton is so easy to get past anyone else seeing that. He was getting exposed time and time again in that MK Dons game. That was probably the only kind of slight negative on that game. But um, for me, I think that just comes with time. I think his football intelligence just comes with time. And maybe that's, you know, the lead for someone like an experienced left-back to show the ropes. Um even if it was just, and I know he's been injured for a little, quite a while during at Blackpool, even if that's just loaning back Reese James till the end of the season from Blackpool that we sold to Blackpool in the summer, you know, loan him back in if you can and give him an opportunity. Depends how much first team football is playing at Blackpool, though, to be honest. I mean, looking at left backs then, uh, Sam, if that is the if, if that's the remit. Who would you see coming in in terms of left backs? Who do you think could be good left backs to come in? I'm going to look at transfer markets, see if I can find some while we're talking. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm not really sure on any free left backs because I've really just been looking at uh, free strikers. Obviously, we've got, well, we've got a few loaning strikers in. So uh, if you could just list them off, I'll, I'll say who I think is good. I mean, to, to be fair, I like transfer market because what's happened is I've, you know, I sort of developed my shortlist from them, and mm. you know, and and one of the sent. Guess who one of the midfielders was on my shortlist? Adam Clayton, Adam <laughs> freaking Clayton. So I got, <laughs> I, I got that transfer on the money. Um, mm. so uh, let's have a look. Let's look at so one of the big standout English ones in terms of really old players is Charlie Daniels. Um, it, you know, he was, it's, it's not, hang on, I'll just turn the sound off that little clip. Um, so yeah, basically Charlie Daniels. So he's been out of a club since Colchester, um, this season. Obviously he was at Portsmouth before that. He was at Shrewsbury before that. Mm. Uh, he left on a free in 2020 from Bournemouth. Hasn't really found a permanent home at that point. Um, I, I, I mean, Charlie Daniels, first of all, do you think he could be a good option? Yeah, I think we just need someone with a bit of experience just to, obviously we've got Adam Clayton and all, and Tommy Rowe were realistically the only one with quite, quite well, it was the most experience that uh, in the team that he had. And I think Adam Clayton coming in also gives that experience. And then, you know, it's it's a very, very young back guy. And, um, and I think that's where we just need experienced players. Obviously, Tom Anderson's going to be coming back. If we get Adam Clayton, uh, uh, the left back that he was on about, um, and we've got Adam Clayton to help the young midfield, obviously with Matt Smith, even Garbraith, and Kieran Agar to help the strikers more more experience. You know, we've got quite a bit of experience throughout the team now, and I think that could really help the youngsters. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at contracts expiring, because that's another place that I look for with, um, with transfer market. I look for... Um, contracts expiring so let's have a look at left backs contracts expiring and we're going to go down further down the list because there's some players here at big clubs that are running out of contract uh, you know you, you, your Halstenbergs your Mandavas at Lille etc the very unrealistic ones so we do have to look really further down we're looking at like the second half of the pages here um I mean, we're even. I even have to go past page two because you've got Ashley Young and Eric Peters on page two. So we, know, we need to go past page two. Um, here we go. This might be the right page. So Papa Soare at Charlton, he's running out of contract. Um, Stephen Ward used to be at Burnley, he was at Walsall for 12 months. Uh, Cal Smith was at Portsmouth a while back uh, with Luton currently. Ben Purrington, again, that's someone who. Could be good. Twenty five years old, still got time to um, to lead and develop. Um, in terms of other players, um, you've got. Let's have a look. So we've got 
uh, is a name that people, some people might recognize it, some people might not. Abdullah Gomar from Zamalek in Egypt. Um, he's someone that, um, you know, he's running out of contract in Egypt. If you're looking for an international signing, I think he could be uh, interesting. Um, so, you know, I, there's a few there. Charlie Daniel, Stephen Ward. You know, if you want to go for the experience, if, if you want to go for the experienced option, you were looking at Stephen Ward or Charlie Daniels, or you, even take a pop at Eric Peters from Burnley if you have the money. But um, <laughs> um, but if you want to take a pop at a newbie, then you'd be looking at um, you know someone like an Abdullah Gomar. But as Mike said, he probably won't get a. A, a work permit. Uh, and Charlton fan has just said Perrington will sign a new contract. Charlton have loaned Castillo and Suarez. Uh, uh, loaned Castillo and Suarez has Premier League experience. Putting him on the transfer list will give him free. So Papa Suarez, from the sounds of it, is available. So do you think Rovers could take a pop at someone like a Papa Suarez or maybe go for someone that's like a development player, someone to compete with Horton at his, his age? Yeah, I think. We need, like I said, I think we a Papa Suarez could come in and do a job. Um, if it even if it is just on a short term deal, just to try and help develop um Brandon Orton until you know he does become better because you know he's 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 all right, but I think we just need better players than him. Um, in, in this team, if we, if we wanted to start our survival, you know. He went on a bit of a run of scoring t- in two games in a row, but he's like uh, some of the chat said, he's just getting getting got past too easy, I think. Um, but yeah, if we do bring someone in, I think it does need to be someone with experience. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you think about this. I know he's twenty one, but he's out of contract at Brentford. Dominic Thompson, um, he's. Um, Obviously, like I said, under 21 at Brent. He's playing in the Brentford senior team, though. Um, he's out of contract in the summer. Do you think he could be worth the crack? I mean, Josh Wil- Josh Wilson as brand, another player from Man City's under 23, someone that has got, from what I understand, quite an exciting future from people, from people's opinions. A um, couple of exciting younger players there to compete with him at his age and his level. Um I mean, could that be worth a crack, or does it have to be experience? No, I definitely think that it could be worth a punt. You know, um, obviously it's not got to be experience, but especially if there is going to be players that can come in and will really, really push him um, because they could be better than him or they could be just like around the same level as him, which I feel we need someone better. Um, You know, it could then develop him more and then, if we do get a younger person, that, that then could develop the new newcomer more, and they could just keep bouncing off each other and becoming better and better and better off each other, and that, and that could really work. But you know, it's just whether you know if Brandon doesn't like this player coming in, then he, he could want to leave or you know something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... By the way, Millie Louise, 26, uh, please use the StreamYard link. We'd love for you to come on the show. Um, Charlton fan, in terms of Papa Suarez, said he looks good offensively, not that great defensively, lacks fitness, though. Good backup, last 20 minutes. Uh, Chris Gunter, uh, that's the player you should buy for me. Chris Gunter, uh, first of all, Pav, Pav from the Football Terrace. Massive respect to you. Uh, would take Lou Barry on loan, looks an exciting prospect. It would be nice to see a permanent striker brought in now. Bogues has gone. Got to be the lesson learned there. Um, but no, um, I mean, Sam, they mentioned Chris Gunter there. I mean, I don't, I mean, Charlton fan 2005, please tell me what the situation is on Gunter, whether he is available for transfer or not. But do you think that would be a good, a really good signing if we take up Chris Gunter? Yeah, possibly. You know, he's, he's, he's all right. And I think he, like I said, he could bring that experience to the team. And just just help out the younger players, and I think, like I, I keep repeating, but that's what we need. We just need with this young team. Obviously, the position we're in is horrible, and these players won't have experienced it before. And that's where we need people that have, you know, possibly been in and around that situation, and you know, know how to get out of it. 
um, to help him out. And then if if we do get relegated, then we can just bounce straight back up with him. And then if we do get into it again, maybe if they sign another deal or so, then they, they could help that again and help us um, avoid that situation of going down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, apparently, Charlton are willing to listen to offers. He doesn't play, doesn't fit the team, uses a winger as a right wing back. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a potential um, spot there. I uh, want to come on, but I don't know if I should. You know, it, well, we're still live for another 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, uh, you never know. Come on, Max, come on. Um, can't see Gunter going, Donny. That's fair enough. Um, but, Sam, thank you very, very much for coming on the show. Quickly then, finally, um, we've got a 12-month extension in the contract offers for Clayton and Younger. Um, how exciting is that, that we've got a one-year extension in the contracts for two good players? Yeah, I think that's massive for us, you know, the two very good players. Have they finally learned their lesson? Have they finally learned their lesson about yeah. players and selling them on for cash? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think, you know, they're obviously, like you said, a little lesson. And two players that could, obviously, Ollie Younger's quite young and Adam Clayton's quite old, but, you know, they still could be. They're, they're definitely going to improve the team after, well, from what I know of them. Um, and, you know, could massively help the club. And, and then if, if they do do well, you know, it's. Well, I like how it's not a fixed. Um, how it's not a fixed year. So if they, if they don't do the best, which I'm sh- I'm sure they won't, I'm sure they're going to do well. Then we, they don't have to sign that. But then if they do do good, then they can sign that. You know, I think that's that's what I like instead of you know signing maybe a three or two or three or so year deal. But then they're fixed into that, and then if we want to get them gone, we've got to pay it off or if someone wanted to buy them. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, mate. Um, Sam, thank you very, very much for coming on the show. Much appreciated. No problem. See you later. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, Q Lucas is here. Q, um, first of all, Omar Bagel's gone. Thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, hello. I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't hear you. One minute. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, hello? Hello? Hello, I can hear you now. Brilliant. Omar Mogul, thoughts on that? He's gone to Hartlepool. Uh, f- personally, I feel I feel uh, very sorry for Omar. Um, I think he was a good player on his day for us. Uh, obviously, he didn't really get the chances uh, under Richie Willens uh, to impress. Uh, but obviously, he was a player who played for the badge. You know, as you know, he kissed the badge on his way off at... Um, uh, Morecambe, I think it was, obviously. Uh, that yeah. heartbreaking 4-3 loss. And, um, yeah, uh, I just hope he can uh, get his get his career back going at Hartlepool. Um, I just wish him all the best for the future, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, on more positive news, two big deals this week. Uh, Mippo Odebeko on loan from West Ham to the end of the season. And, of course, the bigger one, really, is Adam Clayton on an 18-month deal. Uh, with the option for another 12 months like Oli Younger. Obviously, that's a big clause in his contract um, that financially could be a, a better decision than it would have been without it. I think, are the board now starting to really listen to the fans and be like, hang on a minute, maybe we weren't making great decisions, but we're going to start making those decisions now? I think so. You know, you've seen uh, almost the rebellion against the board on social media. And I think, I think to an extent, that's definitely played a part. Uh, they've realised that, I think, yeah, they've realised that now, obviously, it's time for business. We are uh, 23rd in League One, I believe, um, after that 1-0 against MK Dons. Mm. Um, I think they have realised to an extent now that it's time to really get going. Yeah, and to be fair, looking over this whole January window, you cannot deny the board of have those significant funds. I, yeah. You know, people say we're still signing players for free. I don't think some people understand what goes into transfers nowadays. You've got the wages. Absolutely. You've got, you've got clubs in the contract. You've got other additional funds as well. You've got, obviously, instalments are now part of the transfers in the modern day. So, you know, and, it's, and, and you know, and you've got to think, Adam Clayton was playing in the championship. It was only three, four years ago in the Premier League. He's still going to cost a couple of grand in wage. Um Mippo Odebeko, 
you know, he's a loan. He's going to be a youngster from. He's a youngster from West Ham. He was on loan at Huddersfield for the first part of this season. He'll cost at least a few hundred a week. Um, Kieran Agar will cost quite a bit. Um, you know, Oli Younger, he was an undisclosed fee. You know, he will have cost about 100 grand in transfers. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was up to £100,000 in transfer fee for Oli Younger. So, you know, the board have spent money this transfer window. It's now just a case of how it unfolds for the rest of this season. Absolutely. And I think uh, Adam Clayton, that's an excellent bit of business, in my opinion. Absolutely excellent from the board. I think, uh, and obviously what you said about uh, people, they really need to realise that uh, signing players, this isn't your FIFA career mode anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you can't just uh, put an offer in. Uh, you've got so much to um, obviously uh, move for. Obviously, you, you've got family issues. Uh, yeah, and as you said... Yeah, I think that um, I think overall it's just a case of you know let's see what the end product is. And to be fair, looking ahead from the from the oh hang on hang on Charlton fan two thousand five got news from a person that knows Charlton well that Charlton are eyeing a loan deal for either Miguel Elzies or Ethan Galbraith. Oh boy, um, Q Lucas, instant thoughts on that Galbraith possibly. Eyed up by Charlton for a loan deal. Uh, I've not heard much on it. Uh, obviously, we don't know much about that. Uh, I think but this is just pulling. I think if this, this is just now. This is if the, this is true, I, I'd have to just thank Galbraith for everything he's done for the club so far. And yeah. I do know, I do know Miguel Aziz. Uh, not not to an extent, not not to a detailed extent, but I uh, I have signed him on Football Manager once. He's a quality player. <laughs> yeah, and and Ronnie said he heard about Galbraith Charlton. To be fair, so that's more, that's 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 more than one person. Yeah, um, I definitely, I definitely count that as a uh, a developed rumor. Yeah. Um, in terms of Bogle, three goals in nearly thirty games. Come on, get a grip, Rovers fans. He simply didn't score enough goals. He was working under three different managers, so I think that. Um, you know, I think it, well, Indy didn't really get an opportunity, but Moore and McSheffrey definitely gave him an opportunity. For me, it's how hard he worked on the pitch. He, yeah, he was a real workhorse. Yeah, it, it, that, it's as simple as that, really. I think there was times where, you know, he did work hard. He just didn't get the goals that we probably yeah. would have seen from him. Um, um, apparently. It said he's likely Aziz, but Galbraith is the second one, the watch. So Aziz seems to be the favourite for Charlton, but Galbraith is the second choice. So we've got to hope and pray that Aziz goes there. Otherwise, they will start looking at the second choice, unless they have other second choices. Um, but to be fair, if we keep our Ethan Galbraith, especially with the attracted interest from the championship and the reported interest from the championship and high league one clubs uh, yeah. last week via, via loads of different United based sources. And, you know, I think I, I, I think Samuel Luckhurst was one of them. Um, mm -hmm. or I think one of the United journalists is one of them. You know, if we can keep Galbraith, that for me is a signing in itself. Yeah, just... Uh... Obviously, he's an extremely talented player. Um, and uh, if we can keep him, I think uh, it will just be an excellent piece of business by the board. I think the board have worked very efficiently towards the uh, latter part of this transfer window. Uh, not so much the first part. We did take... That's the thing, though. You've got you've got to take into account the first part of the window. Uh, the board were very frantic about how they did things. Uh, but now look at the quality of signings that we've actually brought in. You know, you've got Adam Clayton, ex Premier League, three or four years yeah. ago, as you said, and you've got you, you've got Ollie Younger. Players like that are going to be costing a substantial amount of money for the club, and obviously, substantial funds is the big, uh, the big two key words that we heard, obviously, at the uh, Meet the Owners event. Uh, so, yeah, um, Nicholas says, "Wonder if the whippersnappers on Facebook will have the balls to thank the board and retract the bile aimed at Gavin Baldwin." They won't, but I think there has to be an element of if if we bring in, I, I mean, we've got to, th and finally, just to ask you, Q Lucas, about your thoughts on this before we get to our next caller. Um, 
the rest of the window. I mean, we've got four four days left of the window now. Yeah, uh, going to be three tomorrow. Yeah. Um, for me, I said that my stance is, is this has been the same now since Mippo was announced. I still think there's one more coming. I think it's on the wing. But people have now started to say there's t- possibly two coming in before yeah. the first, and one of them could be a left back. And Rick Sheffrey's reported to say that he wants um, a left back. I mean, a left back and a winger on loan. Do you think that would complete the roundup? Uh, to an extent, I think so. Uh, whether, I mean, obviously the ultimate aim here is to stay in League One. Um, we are still hopeful. I think, I think if there was no hope surrounding the club, then the players wouldn't have joined the players that we've brought in, especially the, the quality of the players that we've brought in. Uh, and obviously, uh, in terms of the round being completed, I think we definitely did. We need a left back because, um, Obviously, Tommy Rowe has been uh, playing there. I don't think that's his natural position at all. I think he's a midfielder. He's much better suited to being a midfielder. And I think that's something that we can all universally agree on. Um, But yeah, uh, a winger. I've not heard much about that personally. uh, But I'm sure if we could get a decent creative player who can uh, get the balls into Agar, then um, yeah, you never know. Yeah, and also me me pose a, a forward that likes to play those um, you know off the shoulder runs and coming from behind and you know against the opposition. So you know Mipo is another one of those strikers. So if we play the right pass and the right runs to him, then um, again yeah. he's someone who can cause a lot of, cause a lot of damage. Yeah, obviously, and uh, I've just been looking at the uh, Twitter reaction. I've not heard amazing things from the West Ham fans, but obviously. I don't know if that's just a bit of bias because obviously he was involved in a bit of controversy with him uh, liking a few uh, Manchester United Instagram pictures, which I think is a bit petty from the West Ham fans personally. Um, extremely petty, actually. Um, if he if he wants to do that, so be it. I don't think it's a sign of any real um, betrayal to his football Ooh. club. I think it's just... I think... Uh, my message to West Ham fans who are doing that is honestly grow up. Yeah, I I, I really did get it. Um, but um, but Q Lucas, thank you very very much for coming on the yeah, show, no mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, see it. Uh, there we go. Uh, Charlie, uh, aka Ron Rovers vlogs, was literally backstage, but I don't know where he's gone. Um, you know, I, you know. I don't know where he's gone. Hopefully he gets back soon. Um, you will stay up. Too good of a squad. Uh, only need to win against Plymouth. Then you got confidence. Absolutely. Um, wouldn't take the thing. Uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not saying you wouldn't take a thing back about the board or anything like that. You know, Mark saying here the board is still to blame for the position we're all in. Although those recent signs are a step forward, but we should have signed them last summer. Absolutely, that has to be the flip reversal of this. You know, I as a board inner, I will say that. The signings this January have been great, but they should have been the kind of signings we should have done in the summer. Otherwise, we might not have been in the position that we were in. Um, and maybe it was the wrong managerial appointment in the summer as well. Maybe it was. Um, so, Ron Rovers Vlogs is back. Uh, Charlie, obviously, big, big evening for Rovers. Uh, starting off with the departure of Omar Bogle. Probably was expecting it the summer, but very unexpected in January. Um, he's gone to Hartlepool. From the sounds of it, we've did what we probably should have done in the summer under Wellens and paid him off. Yeah. Um, yeah, first, uh, big up to you. I hope you're well. Uh, been quite a while on it because the EFL show ain't been going on. I don't know what's going yeah. on. Yeah. I'm going to do yeah. a live pre. I think I'm doing a live preview with Nal tomorrow on my channel. So, uh, me and him are reunited. Oh, you got Plymouth, have you? Yeah, we got Plymouth oh, at right. home. They're on some shaky form right now, so it's the best chance to play them. Yeah. Yeah, hope. Hopefully you hopefully you can get get the win. But yeah, I mean Vogel, um yeah, I mean it's and it's an interesting one, isn't it, that he's gone to to Hartlepool. Um uh, I'm not surprised that he's left you, but like like you said, it should have probably been done at the start of the season and not now. Mm. Um, you know, and like you was on about earlier, as for obviously other signings, you said you was linked with um you, you, you've you been linked with that Louis Barry, haven't you? But didn't you sign someone today? Yeah, we signed Mippo Odebeko, 
but I think we're still linked to Louis Barry. Uh, whether that happens as well, I mean, if we get Louis Barry as well, that's even better business. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one because he was obviously on loan at Ipswich at the start of the season, didn't hardly played, and then got sent back. Uh, he's got, he's got, you know, he's got the talent, but he's just. I think he's just. Uh, it could be good if if you do sign him. Uh, I just think he's a bit. He's a. He's very lightweight. He looks like a mm. ten year old. Um, <laughs> and but, so did Thiago. <laughs> yeah, but he was. He was actually tall though, wasn't he? He was a taller sort of striker. Yeah, for you, he so. was more like a fifteen year old. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I'm hope. Yeah, I'm hoping because I'm not really. I wasn't really as surprised that you. That you beat MK as well because I know your record's good against MK in it, uh, and of course they, well, they lost probably their best, well, yeah, best player to Celtic. Um, for, a yeah, cheap, fair for a cheap budget, I think it was a cheap amount of money as well, one and a half million pound. Yeah, yeah, fair play for yeah. Hopefully now you can kick on, and like you said, you've brought in some signings, um, and hopefully now should be interesting to see to see what, like you said, what other business you do. Maybe if you wanted a striker, you, you could take Pittman off us because he ain't really playing. I think we're after good players. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like um, yeah. um Ball dinner, thought you were fence sitter. No, I, I saw... <laughs> no, I ha- I'm not... Fen- when I say uh, ball dinner, I, I, I'm not someone that's going to chant that ball win out. I think the worst thing I could chant is time for change. And I have said that on numerous occasions. Take it whichever way you want it, whether it's about the manager or the or the situation at, at the top of the club. I always, the worst thing I would say is time for change. But for me, it's always been, you know, my you know, it's always been time for change. It's never been bowling out for me. It's been time for change at the worst at the worst time. But um, you know, but my stance doesn't change. You know, even if we survive this, if we survive this season, if anything, this season should be a wake up call for the ownership to actually look at where we could have been and could yeah. have. And say, well, this, you know, this was a nice, this is a nice wake up call. Let's make changes. And I'm gonna, and you know, someone commented it in the video. I am gonna do a video at some point between now and the summer, looking at directors of football and who could be a good realistic choice to come into this football club. Because I'm gonna do the research. I'm gonna do all the research. Get all the names on. Get all the knowledge about them. And um, get you guys some get 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 this video out to the board and give them some ideas myself. Um, <laughs> Omar yeah. Bogle's got a last dance in the NFL player, failed a championship league one with Charlton Doncaster and League Two is his last chance. Maybe, maybe, or may and then if he fails at League Two, maybe it's back to Grimsby in non league, uh, or they're in League Two anyway, uh, if they go up. Uh Bogle played brilliantly versus MK Dons, not too sure about this move. I, I guess so. Uh Gary says two more signing after saying he wants five loans only. We'll have four at the minute. I think get one more in, that's five. Then we have the wage to get a good permanent player. And I think that's why the board have played this really smartly, um, this window. Adam Clayton and Mippo brought in before Bogle was sent out. And Bogle transfer happened over a four-day period to get it all sorted and done. From yeah. the sound, from his first interview with Hartlepool, it sounds like it was a four or five-day deal. So... Clayton and Mippo and all those transfers done with the significant funds. And then we use the the wages freed up by Bogle's departure for a permanent player and the fifth low knee, which for me will be the winger. I think the per- last permanent player will probably be a left back. So a good left back with maybe championship experience, maybe even prem experience like with Adam Clayton. Um, I was going through left backs earlier with someone in the stream. I, you know, I, if it's worth the money, I wouldn't mind taking a punt at someone like Dominic Thompson from who's twenty one from Brentford and running out of contract this summer, or someone like Eric Peters who's a very much thirty three years old, um, not getting much game time. Well, I don't know how much game time he's getting at Burnley to be honest, but um, out of contract in the summer. If he's not playing at Burnley, he's not going to get in the game time, and no Championship clubs that want him. Worth taking a punt. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's a bit, just a bit, you know, un, unrealistic because they get like even Peters would be on a lot. He'd be on yeah. 15, 20 grand a week, and I think I think the best bet you probably got is someone like Charlie Daniels who who left or Stephen um, Ward or Stephen Ward. Yeah, 
because yeah, because he's well, he's out of contract in the summer, and he, I think he's, um, yeah, at, at Warsaw, and apparently he's been awful. So maybe he's not the best player. I think Charlie Daniels though, because he he left Colchester only a few days ago. I don't know why. Uh, I'm not sure why he left, but yeah, maybe someone like with that experience to sort of because I know even I, I've been looking at your lineups and you've got such a it's crazy how young your defense is you, you know with it's it's just madness really um but yeah ho- hopefully you can stay up and hopefully we can try and um get in the playoffs with our games and that that'd be that'd be good uh you know going to Donny away uh again it's been a while Try and try and get the EFL show going back together in one league for it for for a change. <laughs> yeah, because Plymouth ain't going up. I already, I already said that to now like months ago, and he he didn't believe me. But yeah, <laughs> and to be fair, I did. I to be fair, I I I do have optimism that we might stay up, especially if we win on Saturday. So um, yeah. You know, there's no reason why we can't dream to stay up. Uh, time for change, so bored out. Not really saying bored out. Time for change could also mean changing the football structure, changing the way we do things around here, you know, bringing in more football figures. We brought in a new head of sports science in Sam Bowring from Wolves Under 18, which I think could be a very smart appointment. Um, we brought in more coaches to the first team, the academy, Martin Woods being one of them, another former player. Uh, bringing more Rovers DNA into that coaching academy. So I think that's another step forwards. You know, Frank Sinclair is an amazing assistant manager already. Gary McSheffrey's the calm one. Frank Sinclair's the raging one. Um, so good dynamic between Gary and Frank. If you just bring in a director of football and some actual scouts, because I think we looked on a previous stream at the staff at Rovers, there's not actually a scout at Rovers. It's literally just... What? Talent ident- there's li- it's literally just a talent identification heading Graham Younger and, like, this hidden secret recruitment team which is made up of no scouts whatsoever from the sounds of it. So, um, you know, actually bring in some scouts to go looking for players. Actually provide a proper scouting setup. Have yeah. a director of football refresh the football structure, change the way you do things in football-wise, create a model that gains money more than loses money, but also yeah. creates success on the pitch. And then we won't need the owners to go because they'll have done the right things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. That's crazy. Though. Like, like, no wonder why you've been struggling this season if you haven't got an actual, like, 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 because, because, like let's face it, like putting it bluntly, you know, as you know, as fans have got to do. That's what, like, that's why, you know, uh, a sort of not all, all, the, all the blame because I know, you know, sort of last season with um, Butler won it. It was yeah, sort of, sort of on the down, down, and it even Dar- the thing with Butler was it was Darren Moore's players again in Andy Butler's team. Butler could not get those players to play for him. I, I, there was a few tactical mishaps, but he was still. Yeah, learning but even that though, even that with Butler, he he didn't have the experience in the first place. It was, yeah. it was just a cheap option from your board. Yeah, yeah, I'm not denying that at all. But um, I st- but but that had something of a factor in it, which was. That was, I think the difference between this one and McSheffrey from what we're seeing now is McSheffrey actually had a chat, has actually had a transfer window to bring in his players and try and, yeah, move exactly. Out yeah. Wellens as ones. Butler didn't have that transfer window to move out Moore's players and bring in his own players to create some, some something better. Yeah, yeah, that's true, I guess. I mean, I was, I was gonna say. Obviously, you you was on about Frank Sinclair. What is he like? Your assistant manager or something? Yeah. So the for, the former Chelsea legend is our assistant manager. Um, yeah. And he's. I spoke. To, I, funny thing is, and this is a true story. This is an exclusive story. I went down to watch one of the club Doncaster Youth Academy matches, and um, I saw Frank Sinclair, and me and him were just talking for a good few minutes. So. It was great to chat to Frank with like there was no match on for the main well the match I think the match was on for the main team like hours later but yeah it was great chatting to Frank Sinclair especially someone like Frank who's a Chelsea legend 
um, and has been there and done that at Premier League level. Yeah. Um, it was so good to chat to Frank, and he's such a nice person. And also, Gary McSheffrey is a lovely person as well. So, um, you know, knowing the managers and knowing the assistant managers, speaking to them uh, day in day out, it's all it's always great. And you get to know yeah. these people a lot more as individuals rather than just managers and assistant managers. So, you yeah, know, absolutely. I, I, mean, I, 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 you know, I was speaking to someone today in, in well, before I went to work, and they sort of give vibes. If if we can if we can back them the right way and make it work, it could be like Neil Critchley at Blackpool, where it's not a lot of experience at senior level, but if you back them well and you give them the right tools and they play the right football, it does work. Yeah, and like also like you. Like you said, it was it was, um, you know, it was the way, and it was obviously good for the fans that you know, you, like you've seen the players give everything, you know, give the mm. players uh, against MK Don. So at least you know, you know, they're they're still in it and they're still wanting to to stay. And and the the reason why I brought up Frank Sinclair is because uh, we we played against uh, we played against Scunny, of course, the other day. Um, what a trek that is, mind Jesus. Uh, and um, they they on the day we played him, they they brought in Frank Sinclair's son on loan from Mansfield. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the reason why I brought it. But yeah, like I said, I think I mean it did look all all bad, but uh, you know with with Doncaster. But hopefully now, like you said, it, if the players, it's it's all about doing the basics. You you might not have the, the most amazing quality, but if you can just do the basics right like just defend as a unit and put bodies on the line like you did the other day <laughs> i and think all the younger will definitely do that if he can compete for 80 minutes under eight like just under 80 minutes with a massive terry butcher head bandage and still throw himself in the way of everything i think we can defend for our lives i yeah. think we'll be all right defensively and if Alohu yeah. could do it with a tissue up his nose and a nosebleed at the same time as well, and that's our centre backs, then I think we're fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It, sh- it should be interesting, obviously. But yeah, I, I, I actually think I actually think you'll win again on, uh, and I hope you do as well because I'll just rub it in Niall's face as well. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you can have the sort of, because that's the thing with. With with League One this season, I'm, I mean, I'm sort of glad that we not glad, but you, you know what I mean. I'm if we was in this position, obviously, like we was last year in this, but because League One's even tougher this year, I yeah. think we'd have even been more screwed this year than we were last year. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, we you can fight and you know manage to stay up, and hopefully, we can come up as well. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, looking at the games we've got after Plymouth on Saturday to start February, we've got the Rotherham derby on, at, the, at our stadium on the oh. Tuesday. I mean, <laughs> Rotherham, Rotherham have been scrapping results the last couple of games. If there is any time to play Rother scum, it is now. Yeah, it is now. And absolutely, you know, being in the relegation zone gets thrown out the window on Tuesday. Tuesday's about shutting their knobhead fans up. <laughs> Tuesday is about shutting them up once and for all about who the bloody hell runs South Yorkshire. Don Gaster Rovers run South Yorkshire. Um, that's all about playing for pride. That's all about shutting their knobhead fans up. That's all about yeah. um, sending Fred Ladapo packing in a freaking taxi. That's all about... <laughs> That's all about giving Paul Warren a lesson in respect. Um, you know, that's a that's that's more than just the league. That's that's yeah. just playing for professional pride. And then we got and quickly, quickly also, sorry to interrupt. Quickly also, the, the fact that it's a derby and can, obviously means anything can happen. So it's a it's a time to forget. <laughs> it's a time to forget the, you know, the 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 what checker trade game where you you know. Obviously, I won't bring up the score, and then the 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 other game, and now it's you know anything can happen Tuesday night under the lights at the keep mode. You know, I've been there, I've seen uh what it's like. You know what it can be the keep mode atmosphere. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully you can you can because because they they have like you said they haven't 
recently they haven't been smashing teams, have they? They've they, you know they lost against Accrington, they've dropped a few other points, uh, stuff like mm. that. So now it's like you said, it's the best time to play them as well. Absolutely, and then afterward, after that, by the way, it isn't rude. It's just experiencing the derby. Um, and then on the Saturday, we've got Sunderland away. Sunderland away is a big one because, you know, we've got to have some revenge from that 3-0 defeat. Uh, we've got a much better squad than we did that day. So, fingers crossed we can get something from that. Then, the next Tuesday after that is hosting Ipswich. Again, that's a big one. Tough, tough games, man. Jesus. Ips, Ipswich, we, we lost 6-0 at their place this season. So, we've got to get some revenge against them on the Tuesday. Then, we're away at Portsmouth. Uh, again, I'm going to be in Blackpool on that day, so I will do a, a, a review for, from uh, on location from Blackpool on that day. Um, that's going to be a tough one. Again, Portsmouth have provided some good results. We got a draw against them at our place, so we need to get the three points and get it unbeaten run to the season against Portsmouth. Then we're away at Lincoln. I'm going to be at the Central Bank on that day. Big game. I, I expect nothing but three points from Lincoln, especially up against John Marquise as well. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Forgot then, about that. <laughs> then we're hosting Sheffield Wednesday on the Saturday the 19th. Another South Yorkshire derby where we've got to shut their knobhead fans up. Um, then on Tuesday, we're hosting Accrington. Then on Saturday, we're away at the team that beat us on the first day of the season, AFC Wimbledon. So, Accrington, bogey team, AFC Wimbledon, first loss of the season on the first day of the season. Apart from that, it is the big teams. And February's yeah, that's, be a- that's a tough run, man. February is going to be a telling month for our squad, and it's all about whether Younger can keep up with it. Clayton, Alowu, Agard, Dadu, all those players, Jones, Horton, Noyle, all those players can keep up with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about just trying to grind out anything, even if you could take a few points that are draw. But even, even if you don't win, at least try and draw a few games, because that is a that is a very, very tough run. So, and like you said, try and nick, try and, you know, shit out a, a 1-0 or something away or, or at home, you know. Um, yeah. And plus, on Tuesday, Rotherham are bringing like nearly 2,000. I think nearly at the moment, I think it's still counting, but nearly at the moment, it's nearly 2,000 Rotherham fans coming on the Tuesday. So we've got to send them packing in despair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, with she- same with Sheffield Wednesday, same with Plymouth, same with Portsmouth, same with Ipswich. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I just, yeah, hopefully you can get... An- hopefully, because I'm guessing, I'm guessing... You haven't had back-to-back wins yet this season. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully, if you beat Taylor, is our first chance of back-to-back victories this season. Yeah, hopefully you can get that, and then that that might you know spark you on and you know get the fans a bit more behind. And like you said, as as a fan, as as long as you see, even if you like say if you lose a game, as long as you see a hundred percent from everyone, and at least they're trying and fighting for the the badge. Then you 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 got every chance really, so yeah, absolutely. And like I said, their twelfth of March, Gillingham's a massive game. It yeah. is, it is because Gillingham are in free fall and a mess. You know, journal that journalist Gabriel Sutton did come out and say if Paul Scully doesn't sell the club, it could end up being non-league. Um, yeah. Gillingham are in a really dire situation. They haven't right even got now. a manager, have they? They still haven't got a manager. No. Um, yeah. I think they were. I think they did put out a statement a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, saying they were to, they were allowed to talk to Bromley's manager, but Bromley still had no interest in letting him go. So yeah, Gillingham, Gillingham, are, I had, a, I knew they'd, I knew they'd struggle when they signed the two players that got relegated from us, but I didn't realise they'd be in that much of a, in the you know, in the dungeons as you'd say. <laughs> I th- do you think do you think Gillingham's the next club will start to see protests against the owners? I mean, I I don't really want to think about the next club that will do that because we don't want to see any club being in that situation. But obviously, when you see Oldham involved in that, when you see South End currently involved in that, it, it makes you think and, who's and next. Scunny. I think yes, yeah, Gunny as well. Um, I think it makes you think who's next. I mean, Birmingham uh, start you know Birmingham are continuing to up the pressure. Gillingham for me, will start at some point. It's just a case yeah. of it next. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bad, isn't it? Um, yeah, and it's like, the thing is, like, with, that's the thing, if you go on, like, a 
a downward spiral, then it just starts getting out of hand. Then, especially when they still haven't got a manager, the you know the signings, you know recruitment and whatever. You know, it's, it's bad for any club to see, even even if it's even if it's sort of even if it's like a rival club, or it's still horrible to see. You know, apart from the rivalry, you know, you don't want to see any club do do you know not that well. Yeah, like you know, I'll say this on camera, Tom Blue in the face. If Rotherham United ever changed ownership to someone who gets them relegated to League Two gets them struggling at the bottom of League Two, at the foot of the table in five years' time, falling out the Football League and wipes the, the club of money and runs off to a mansion or something, like what Leighton Orient's owner did at the time, Bacchetti, yeah. then I would sit here on camera and I would say, you know what, Rotherham fans, us as South Yorkshiremen, we stand with you and your owner must go. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, like you know, a, rivalry goes aside when things like this happen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like you know, if if God forbid, but if 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 we ever got in any trouble like that, luckily our, our own is usually pretty sound. You know, give us, you know, give us, you know, Scunny a free coach trip and stuff like that. Um, so, but if anything ever happened like that, I'd be mad. It'd be uproar. So yeah. yeah, and I'd be the same. You know, people would say you'd be the first to defend the ball when we start protesting if our owners ever did that. No, I wouldn't. I'd be right alongside those banners and I'd be protesting for them to go if they ever did that. So, you know, I don't care if I cut ties with the club for doing it. I'd I'd be right there with you. Um yeah. so you know, lo loyalties to the club go out the window when a club's in danger of going out of business. I'd be standing right with the fans. So, you know. Before people start with that, don't even dare. Um, so, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? We don't really want to think like that, but um, mm. you can't help or feel for Gillingham right now. And, and, you know, Birmingham as well. Yeah, yeah, there's quite a few in there. Like, I think, I think the worst, like, one of the worst, and it could be, is, is Scunny. Because, uh, like, you think, like, what? seven eight years ago they were in the championship you know they had sharp and whatever and fighting for promotion even three or four years ago and now they're i mean we we should have won about seven nil like we mm. had missed so many chances but they're like you can see the attendance is just over two thousand and um you know the fans were angry and stuff like that and yeah it's not it's not good for any club like self end as well and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. It's not good. Uh, the high flyer says, "Can't believe Gary is pushing for extra signings after the window we've had." Is <laughs> I know even more signings. Uh, is a barrier chance for out the window now? Not completely. I think there's still a chance. It's not over till the fat lady sings. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so you'd support the Rotherham Willie Heads. I wouldn't support Rotherham. I would support their cause. I think people are missing the point here. Yeah. Um, as much as I'd hate Rotherham, I'd hate to see them get abused by an owner. Rivalry moves, as you say, football comes together. Absolutely. And by yeah. the way, it's not up to the owner to abuse them. It's up to us. Um, but um, but no, in all seriousness, yeah, we don't want to see that. Um, Younger was class at MK and Alou was the best sign we made in years. Alou, for me, if we can keep him under contract and keep him moving and moving and moving every year and he keeps developing like he is, I reckon he could be one of the best long-term signings we've made in years. Generally great, strong and possessionally top. And he came through the Arsenal setup. So imagine if we signed someone who's better than some of the Arsenal centre backs now. Um, imagine how imagine how embarrassed they'd feel. Uh, our back line is great at the minute, just a bit of experience at left back will work. That's all we're missing. Even if we load in Reese James back from Blackpool to the end of the season, I think that could be enough for the end of the season. Um but uh, there we go. Uh, Charlie, thank you very, very much for coming on the show, mate. I will end it there. Yeah, I appreciate it, having on, mate. All the best for Saturday. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Um, I will. I was making a point that you were giving Rodman abuse for no reason. Uh, for, it was it's rivalry, isn't it? You know, you, you, you know, you gotta you gotta feel the rivalry. You've got to feel the rivalry. You know, you gotta feel it from the word go. You can't give them any ounce of. Excuse me. Any ounce of respect? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure if there was, a, there was a Rotherham fan on here, I'm sure if there was a Rotherham fan TV, or 100% Rotherham United, or RUTV, 
Um, you know, you know, RFTV, they would be saying the same things about us. Um, how about Reese James at left back? Yeah, I think that again would be uh, a nice option until the end of the season. Yeah, I'm not going too over the top. I'm not going. I'm not crossing that line. Um, when it comes to Rotherham, do you think mass? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All bets are on the table when it comes to Rotherham because you just want to get the one you want. Uh, Cam John to come back will make us even stronger. Absolutely. I, I think he will. I think when he comes back, he'll be stronger. But we can't just wait for Cameron John to come back. We've got to get someone who's going to compete for that place as well. Uh, but there we are, guys. That's going to be it for this live stream. I have gone on long enough and I need to film my Bogle video. <laughs> um, how many points will Doncaster get in the next three games? Well, um, oh, well, wow. Um, Right, the next three games, I mean, take Plymouth out of it. We've got Rotherham, Sunderland, Ipswich. I think realistically we could get two or f between two and four out of nine on our current form. I think we could either get a point out of maybe Rotherham and Ipswich. Um, or we could get a maximum of four points. We could get the win against Ipswich and maybe a point against Rotherham. Sunderland, for me, is the least beatable out of the three. Ipswich, the most beatable, Rotherham in between. Um, six is a very optimistic one. I'd like to see six points. Uh, wins against Rotherham and Ipswich, maybe. Uh, on another topic, when is Glitch 2 out? <laughs> so for those of you who don't know Glitch, it was my university performance film. Um... I might make another one. Who knows? Uh, I, I I might knock on the old uh, jigsaw mask and uh, make another one. Um, maybe a sequel. Maybe follow on from the uh, the, the previous story. Um, with a full fit squad, we are playoffs. Maybe next season. Uh, obviously, yeah, you were talking about that. If Robins had signed, Robin had signed Bogle, would you still give it a great big hand? <laughs> um... No comment. Um, but there we are, guys. <laughs> uh, that is going to be it for this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to go and film the Omar Bogle video and get both the Mippo video and the Omar video out there this evening. And for now, I'm Aaron Chandler from Throw Football DRC. Keep living the Rovers life. De De Defoe dream signing for Donny. I reckon so. Take care, guys. Have a lovely evening. Stay tuned for the two videos. Come on, Rovers. Come on. <laughs>